Uh, the advantage of the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass include a quicker weight loss. That doesn't make it right for every patient, but patients will tend to lose weight more quickly at the beginning, and then obviously it slows down as you get closer to the year mark. Um, the patients may get dumping. Now, patients may not like dumping, but I like it when patients get a lot of dumping. And essentially, when too much sugar or too much carbohydrate goes through the gastric bypass and gets into the intestine, patients feel lousy. It happens maybe 20, 30 minutes after they've eaten something that has too much sugar, say ice cream, a candy bar, and they feel bloated, crampy, uh, clammy. They just don't feel well. It lasts around 20 or 30 minutes, and then it kind of gets better. So they, it doesn't physically hurt the patient, but they don't want to feel like that. So they tend to avoid those foods. So that does help with weight loss. So I always tell my patients, no offense, I hope you get a lot of dumping, not because I want them to feel bad, but I want them to avoid those foods. Um, the gastric bypass technically is reversible, but it, uh, it's complicated. And it's something that a patient, it's very rare to do. I haven't had to do that in over 10 years. So whether or not you see that as an advantage or not, but again, it's still a tool. Patients have to look at that as a tool. Um, the disadvantages of the gastric bypass are that it's a more complicated operation. It takes longer. Uh, the risks of a leak, which is when the gastric contents leak through the staple line or through the pouch, uh, it's, the, the risk is very low. It's less than 1%, but it still can happen. Most of them can be handled non-operatively. You can have a narrowing within the channel um, but that can be happen or taken care of endoscopically. GI doctors can go in with a balloon and open that up. Um, there is a risk of nutritional uh, changes. That's why patients have to take their vitamins so they don't get deficiencies. Most of the risks are a patient's own medical risks. All the operations are done under general anesthesia, so we want patients in the best medical shape at the time of surgery. The advantage of a sleeve gastrectomy include uh, the fact that we don't reroute the bowel. Essentially, we just take out two-thirds of the stomach, so there's no rerouting and there's no foreign body, such as which a, an adjustable gastric band. Uh, the weight loss is pretty close to the gastric bypass. They're actually fairly similar, but there's a little bit less malabsorption. There is still some malabsorption of the vitamins, but there's less. Uh, so it's a natural flow of the food contents as it goes through the bowel. Uh, it still is done laparoscopically, um, so the weight loss, again, is pretty close to the gastric bypass. Uh, the disadvantages of the sleeve gastrectomy are that there is a longer staple line. Obviously, the highest risk that we have is going to be a leak, and that's the one thing we want to avoid. It's still very low with the sleeve gastrectomy procedure, but there is a longer staple line. There's more pressure inside a sleeve, so it can build up. So the risk of a leak will be the highest with a sleeve gastrectomy even though overall it's low. Uh, and that's gonna be our big thing that we wanna take away from that. There is a risk of obstruction. Having that tube, it can twist, it can kink. Um, so patients have to let things heal. It doesn't just heal overnight. So these are some of the risks of the sleeve gastrectomy. The recovery time after bariatric surgery is somewhat patient dependent, depending on what type of work they do, um, how active they are. Um, generally, we have patients restrict their lifting to no more than 10 pounds for the first week, 10 to 15 pounds for the second week, and they gradually increase their activity following that. Most people take off work anywhere from two to four weeks, depending on how strenuous it is. The big issue for patients going back to work is they have to be able to keep track of their liquid intake, their protein intake. They, they cannot go prolonged periods of time without eating and drinking. Um, so they have to be able to work with these things. And again, not be too strenuous following surgery. So we will sign disability paperwork for four to six weeks. Most people don't take that long, depending on how, how active they are. Most people are driving even at about a week, as long as they're not taking a lot of pain medications. They're usually feeling pretty well by that time. We just want to make sure they stay on target with not advancing their diet too fast, even though they feel well. Uh -huh.